Hey guys, what's going on? It's Joseph Mensel from MassiveJoes.com. I'm here with Optimum Nutrition sponsored athlete Nick Bracken and Port Adelaide Football Club nutritionist Andrew Rondinelli. Andrew, tell us a little bit about the macronutrient requirements of, of AFL footballers, the, the protein, the carbs, the fats that they're trying to consume and how that differs from an off season to during the season. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, carbohydrates and protein, they're the key. Um, Carbohydrate, we, the, the players are required to do a lot of sprinting, mm -hmm. a lot of high intense efforts, um, as well as cover you know, 14, 15, 16 kilometers in a game as well. So that's that's the number one um, fuel source for these guys. Yep. Um, protein plays an important role as um, that's, that's what we use to regenerate our muscle tissues. Mm -hmm. So one, recovery, um, and also two, in the gym session, we wanna try and get them powerful and, and obviously put on um, muscle mass or strength. Um, so that's where that plays a quite important role. Yep. Um, fats also, um, obviously looking more at the healthy fat options, a lot of omega-3, it's a contact sport, so you look after the guy's joints. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also an important factor as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now Rondo, you've got 45 players, is that correct, yep. on, on your list? With 45 players comes 45 different body compositions. Yep. Uh, you know, you have energy output, all of the fun stuff. How do you adjust 45 different players? Yep. Macronutrients? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a number of different things we have to consider. One would be um, where the play, where the coaches want these guys to play, or what or what position on the field. Um, two, whether they're a rehab player, or whether they're recovering from injury, and also um, from a performance aspect, what do they need to perform on the field? So they're the three things that we we look at. Um, and once once you get them right, then you can start being a little bit more individualised, where you can. Um, based on skin folds or DEXA scans, see what's, what specific areas they need improvement in, whether it's bone mineral density or whether it is decreasing fat mass or increasing muscle mass. From there, um, depending on the training loads or how much training they're actually doing, we can adjust their food intake to, to link in with that. Um, it's quite individualised because obviously with, with those 45, they've all got different appetites, they all like different foods, so it's really hard to be too, too cute or too specific. Um, so a general rule of thumb would be a lot of lean meats, a lot of lean proteins with each meal to fill them up. Yep. Um, carbohydrate at the right, right times. Yep. Um, around game day, that could be a little bit more specific where they do need a carbohydrate load or during or after a game. Um, and that's probably the same with protein as well, making sure they are getting their 20 gram hit after every session as well. Sure, so you would say that meal timing is quite critical oh, absolutely. At, at that point? Yeah, so our, the, the general guideline for these guys from a recovery and a a lean mass index point of view would be having, you know, every three three to four hours getting um, 10 to 15 grams of protein in. Um, that would obviously be increased if there is a session prior prior to that three or four hours. Um, so, you, I mean, you're talking about massive caloric output from, from yeah. AFL football players, which means massive caloric input. Yeah. Through Optimum Nutrition products as, as a sports nutrition provider for, yeah. for Port Adelaide Football Club, how do those products play a part in, in the macronutrient intake yeah. of the players? Yeah, so, so vital. So one of the things um, the boys have been really good at this year is getting the club really early. So whether they eat breakfast at home or at the club, by the time they finish the actual session, they probably haven't eaten for five or six hours. Yeah. So um, give you a little bit of a feel of how the morning went this morning, they would have been on the track for three and a half, four to four hours. Yeah. Prior to that, they would have had team meetings, physio stretching, um, stra strapping. Yeah. So, you know, it's probably, it's probably gone out to six hours. So straight off the track, the first thing we tell them to do before they do any recovery is get the, get their protein shake in. Yep. Um, generally, we try and you know, obviously promote a high weight protein shake mm -hmm. um, and the minimum will be 20 grams. It's very individualized. Some guys might need more than that. Mm -hmm. um, we will add some carbohydrate to that as well. Straight from there, they'll do their recovery, which will generally be some sort of um, active movement or ice bath type, type arrangement and then they're upstairs and, they ha and generally have a, bit, a big meal as well, getting ready for the afternoon weight session. Yeah. Um, so that, a lot of people don't think about it, but there is a, a big gap from when they actually had their breakfast to when they do eat their lunch. So the, the product is vital. Same as the afternoon, when they're doing weights, um, some, some recovery, massage, some more skill work or running, they tend to be quite on the go. So mm -hmm. although we do have fresh fruit, nuts, yogurts available, sometimes they just need something quick to get them through to the next session. So that's where the yep. shakes come come in. That's all individualized as well. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So we're seeing um, more and more trends in the industry. Yeah. Um, we're seeing paleo diets, fad diets, all sorts yeah. of all sorts of diets. What's your thoughts on them? Yeah. Are you a fan so, of a paleo diet? Yeah, so the, so the key word there, um, I like to say is trends. So they come in and out of society, so basically because that people can't withhold them for the whole, their whole life. Yeah. So that, that's, so that's so whenever you do see something that does sound too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah. 
Um, with the whole paleo concept, it's it's quite controversial, but um, I'll, the, the concepts are okay, eliminating the processed foods. The thing that doesn't sit comfortable with me is the low carbohydrate intake, because the, these guys, they like, the, the work they do on the on the track, they, they just they wouldn't be able to hit the numbers they do for, based on GPS, based on their training load numbers without a, without carbohydrate as a main fuel source. Um, so the, yes, the concepts are okay, but the actual theory behind it um, probably doesn't sit well with me personally. But it could work for someone else. That, that's that's fine. Yeah. Beautiful. An AFL footy player eats a lot of food, as you mm. mentioned, Joe. What would a daily um, food regimen look like for an AFL footy player? Okay. Could you give us an example? Yeah. So. Um, Oh, it depends on what is this a full so, training day? Yeah, or yeah, sure. Yeah, and we've got a midfielder so, as well. So we'll go they've so got um we'll go skills in the morning, weights and more skills or run in the afternoon. So generally I'll wake wake up between six thirty and seven. Um, a carbohydrate based breakfast. Um, that can vary depending on how the GI track deals with food prior to running, um, which is another important factor which isn't for another topic, but um, so generally it's it's a carbohydrate based baked breakfast, a little bit of protein, that's generally through dairy, so it could be something like a Greek yogurt or some um, some milk. Um, so that, that'd be, yeah, they'd generally be a cereal, then they'll come in, prior to the session, a lot of them will tend to have a little bit of caffeine, um, 100 milligrams, that can come from coffee, it can come from some sort of sugar-free beverage, um, or it can come from some amino, amino, energy. amino energies, which are perfect. Oh, then that comes awesome. in a chewable form or a powder form. Yeah. So, the, so majority of them will have 100 milligrams before a session. Um, during the session, depending on how long it goes for, um, if it's over a two hour session, they'll tend to have an energy gel about halfway through it or whenever they feel they need it. Um, coming off the track, I have their shake. A lot of them will go for either a 2 one one product, which is a little bit higher in carbohydrate, or some will go for the gold standard, which is a quick 20 gram hit. Um, following that would be lunch, another carbohydrate based meal. Um, might be rice, pasta, stir fry, a lot of lean meats, chicken, fish, that type of stuff. Um, once they're loaded up, had lunch, they'll come in, do some do some weights. After the weight session, um, similar thing, they'll either be having their hydro builder, some of them might have creatine, some BCAAs, um, or some will just have the gold standard, that same thing, all individualized. During that time between lunch and dinner, they will have, probably have some other snack. Um, we have we always have raw nuts upstairs, um, fresh fruit, um, yogurts for the yogurt shop, um, and, and the same that's available. Dinner, if the neck, if the, the day following this day is a, um, the, it's a low training day, generally the meal might be a little bit lower in carbohydrate. So that's where they will have, it might be a lean chicken breast, some steak with some veggies or a salad. Mm -hmm. um, and before they go to bed every night, they have the casein product. Yep. Um, and they can make that into a drink or a custard. Um, and if they're, depending on who they are, like uh, Matthew Lobie, who we've just spoken to, he would have obviously a little bit more food, which could be some sure. fruit or um, additional yogurt or something like that, it just depends. So that's basically, they do eat a lot. Um, the one thing we try and we try and educate them on is the timing of their food and what days they do eat. Sure. Um, so always always look at what training you've got the next day, what training you've got that day, and then you base your diet around that. So it'd be, it could be high, absolutely, high, yeah, high. absolutely. So in season, it's actually quite interesting because the day before the game, day of the game, day after the game, they're very similar. Where you're trying to regenerate tissue or recover, sure. or the other option is you're trying to carbohydrate load and prepare right. for the game. Sure. The rest of the week, apart from the main session day, you probably don't need as much carbohydrate because you're not doing as much. So the key is to periodize your carbohydrate intake and have protein at the right time throughout the week. Awesome. So there you go, some pretty cool insights to the, the dietary requirements of AFL for footballers. Andrew, thank you so much. No, no worries. Good luck for the Good season. Time. Cheers. Cheers, Rhonda. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.